Hi! This is the second video of Chapter 1, Perfect Competition. In this video, we will see how the firm is going to maximize its profits. So, to begin, in the last video we saw how we compared the profits and we say that the purpose of the firm was to maximize profits. Then, if we want to maximize the profits, we want to maximize the this difference, the revenue mi minus the cost. So, we just have to make the derivative of the profits function with respect to the quantity and equals this to zero. This is what maximization means. The, the deriving the function and equals equaling this to zero. Okay. So if I make the derivative of the profits and equals this to zero, this is called the first order condition. And if I make the derivative of the profits and equal this to zero, this is the same then making the derivative of the revenues with respect to Q minus the derivative of the cost with respect to Q and equals this to zero. So at the end, uh, what I will have is that the derivative of the revenues with respect to Q will be equal to the derivative of the cost with respect to Q because I put this cost on the other side of the inequality. Then we know that the derivative of the total revenues is just the marginal revenues and the derivative of the total cost is the marginal cost. So when we maximize the profits, we will know that the marginal revenue will equal to the marginal costs. Then in these two graphs, we can see the, the, cost, the total cost function here, which begins this point, this is the total cost function and then goes up and it begins at this point exactly where we have the fixed costs. So it begins in a point different from zero in the y axis because even when the firm produces zero units of products it already has some fixed costs. And the fixed costs are represented by the, this constant quantity in this axis. We also have the revenues function, which is going through here. This is the revenues function. And then we know that the marginal revenues represents the slope of the total revenues function. So if I check the slope, any point of the revenues function, I will be finding the marginal revenues at this point. And if I do the same with the cost, with the total cost function, if I cal calculate the slope at any point of this function, I will be representing or calculating the marginal costs at any point. Then we can easily see that there will be a point exactly here where the distance is maximum, the distance is larger between the revenues and the cost, at this point we see that the slope of the revenues function is going to be equal to the slope of the total cost function. And this means that at this point we will be maximizing the profits because the difference between the revenues and the cost will be maximum, but also because the slope the marginal cost and the marginal revenue will be equal. Then if we pay attention to the graph below, we see that the, we have here the profits function. And this function goes up and then it goes down. When it goes up, it's going, it's going to reach a peak. And this peak will represent the maximum profits. So this at this point, we see that the slope, the slope is completely horizontal. This means that the slope at this point is going to be equal to zero. Then, as the slope of the profits represents the marginal profits, we know that when the profits reaches its maximum, the marginal profits will be equal to zero. And this is what we have seen mathematically in the previous slide. Okay, so now let's focus on perfect competition. 
The assumptions of perfect competition are the following. First, there are many consumers and producers, so none of them has market power to decide the price over the others. Then the price is decided in the market. Second, the product exchange in the markets is going to be homogeneous. There is no differentiation between the sellers, then the consumers will not care about buying to my company or another. Third, there are no entry or exit barriers, and the companies can enter and exit the market at any time. And fourth, the decisions are independent. The companies cannot collude, they cannot collaborate, they cannot cooperate to fix the price, and the consumers cannot do it either. And five, there is perfect information. Here, in these two graphs, we have more information about profits maximization for the market and for the firm. The graph on the left is going to provide the price and the quantity, the price and the quantity, when we find the equilibrium in the market. Okay? So this happened when the, the quantity demanded equals to the quantity supplied. Then we find the equilibrium price and quantity exchanged in, in this market. As the company has no market power and there are so many consumers and producers in the market, our firm will take the prices given. It is going to be a price taker, our firm. So the price will be represented by a horizontal line here in, the, in this graph on the right side. Horizontal line for our firm and this price will equal to the firm demand, but also to the marginal revenue and to the average re revenue. If we compute the marginal revenue, we see that the marginal revenue is the derivative of the revenues with respect to the quantity. Then the revenues are price multiplied by Q. If we derive this with respect to Q, we find that the marginal revenue equals to P. And then as P is constant in perfect competition, we will see that it coincides exactly with this horizontal line. We can also check that the average revenue equals the price by dividing the total revenue by Q. Okay, so P multiplied by Q divided by Q, then we will find that P equals to the average revenue and this all is equal. Then, if we go back to the graph where we represented the total cost and the total revenue, we see that the total revenue is a linear function because the price is constant. Then the slope of the total revenue will be always the same. It will be always constant and equal to the price. And to know where the profits are maximized, we just have to look for the point where the distance, where the distance between both functions is maximum or the point where the slope of the total cost function equals to the slope of the total revenues. Okay. Then the marginal revenues at this point equals to the marginal cost and we find that the profits are maximum. The first condition that must be satisfied in perfect competition is that the price equal to the marginal cost. So, since the firm is a price taker, we know that the marginal revenues will be equal to the price and when the profits are maximum, we know that the marginal revenues equal to the marginal cost. Therefore, the necessary condition, the first order condition for maximum profits is under perfect competition that price equals to the marginal cost. And this is the end of this video. See you in the next one.